Good day and welcome to the Reaction Review. Today we're going to look at the just released Coronado Cessna 172SP Skyhawk for X-Plane 11 only. Released Tuesday 8th this December 2019 for $32.95. We're going to start our review in Astavalga Airport. Now, you're probably going to wonder where I got this, but actually it's free and I'm going to tell you towards the end of the video where to get this free scenery. Astavalga Airport is situated in Norway and it serves the towns of Austrian Volga. The airport features a 1070 metre asphalt runway line 206 and 24. Where to download this airport for free is coming up but that's not why we are here. We are here to review the Cessna SP Skyhawk for X-Plane from Coronado. The good news is this aircraft is fully VR compatible and we're also going to have a look at that. Also they say it's PBR superb material shines and reflections. Uh, that's just pretty good. That is Norman in the cockpit fitting with the controls by the way. He's doing my head in all day. Um, he insists we're going to go fly somewhere else and do an ILS approach. He insists on coming with us and he's wrecking my head. Anyway, look at those reflections and the little scuff marks, the dirt. You can take off the fairings there as well if you like. And the detail close up is incredible. Look at the paint. That's what they mean, I presume, by PBR, superb material shines and reflections. It's physically based rendering materials and textures throughout. And you can see close up there is the static vent. And it's really good detail. And there's Norman. He just won't get out and he uh, keeps... He's just a checkbook enthusiast. Anyway, uh, look at the lights there, at the, the reflections, the detail. Close up, it's pretty impressive. There's the fuel vent and the pedo tube behind it. So close up, it's pretty good. They paid a lot of attention. There's your single slotted fowler flaps. Apparently those PBR materials I spoke of are used in the film industry. So that's probably why it's looking so good. Of course, there's Norman again playing with the controls. Uh, I wouldn't mind. He's just a bit of a knob and moron kind of guy. So let's have a look inside the cockpit. And uh, let's uh, get Norman out of the cockpit. So the German 1000. Okay, Norman, uh, say hello. Morning. Um, oh, I wish you'd just go away. What's that? Nothing, nothing, um, nothing. Norman, if you just leave the controls alone, that'd be great, and we'll go flying later. Yeah, well, I just did what I oh. had to do. Um, now, the German 1000 works ideally. Uh, I can't find anything wrong with it. Some people use this as a procedure trainer for the Gorman 1000. It doesn't have ADFs, at least I can't find them yet, but they don't really come with ADFs anymore. The C and the O there in the very left-hand corner throughout this video, that's so you can change the views. And I'm, I, the belly cam doesn't quite work as we're on the ground, but it does work when you're in the air. We'll have a look at that later. You can also change the field of view, which is nice, but you can also do that in the next plane sessions itself anyway. You can also change the window reflections, switch them on or off, the instrument reflections on or off, static elements, the pilot door you can open and close, the passenger door you can open and close. You can also use the mouse to touch the handle as well, that'll open the door and the window, the baggage door, I don't know why you want to open and close that. And of course you can also change the livery, so not very many, they all look kind of the same except for the red one here that I'm using. Let's start up the engine, okay, so let's uh, get rid of the control column, battery on, masters, avionics, mixture rich. Um, we just trim for takeoff and uh, we switch on the beacon light. Now I'm not going through the proper checklists, I know that. And let's start her up. I do like the sound, it's very realistic to the real thing. Apparently, the ground handling has been adapted for X Plane 11 ground physics, whatever that means. And by the way, this 172 is Goodway compatible. Okay, so while I'm taxiing here, we're going to have a look, we're going to clip to VR just so you can have a quick look for about, oh, 60 seconds. So we're going to clip over to VR while we're taxiing, and here we go. Right, in VR, I notice I can look out the sides. I love that. I'm using the Oculus Rift, okay, and they do say this aircraft is VR compatible. It is. I can't find any faults with it. However, I did fly over water, and the reflections were on the water. It looked really weird, so you may want to switch reflections off for VR if you're flying over water. But other than that, it's great. The immersion is fantastic in this airplane. It's very, very well detailed. Now, all the textures and immersion is fine with this 172, but of course, with the Oculus Rift, it's very hard to read the dials, almost impossible sometimes. You have to really lean forward. Now, when the Primex comes out, the Primex 8K or the 5K, I'll be reviewing that, trust me. So we're going to do a very quick circuit here in Austria, just to talk about how it flies. Then we're going to land and we're going to do an ILS somewhere. I haven't decided yet. Norman insists on coming with us to do the ILS. He's a bit of a know-all, so bear with me. Right, then, let's take off. Park and break off. Okay, full power. Now, you'll notice my uh, taxiing is much better with my MFG rudder pedals. If 
you haven't seen my review on the uh, rudder pedals, do have a look at the channel and do subscribe. It really does help when you subscribe to keep the channel going. The flying of this aircraft is fine. I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever. I have hundreds of hours in these aircraft in real life and it's perfect. But with flight simulators, if you try to do anything unusual with spins or stalls to some extent, it's not going to be that accurate. But for normal flying, it's great. So, thumbs up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in land, we're going to collect normal and I have to decide where we're going to go. I do like the visor. Back to normal view now, so do stay tuned because I'm going to show you where to get that free airport and I'm going to have a look there at the ILS. Now, as far as I can ascertain, I have been playing with the Gurman 1000 for quite a while. What we're going to do is we're going to go off somewhere. We're going to go to, uh, let me see, New York somewhere with some more nice scenery, maybe LaGuardia. Yeah, LaGuardia. And we're going to have a look at an ILS approach and just test out, just so you can see the Gurman 1000 working. Now, I haven't found any faults with it. Everything works perfectly well. There's a lot of aircraft already out with the Gurman 1000, but this one is great. It's really, really good. And I do love the reflections that you can switch on and switch off on the Carnado 172. So. We'll butter it down here and we collect Norman. Um, I think I'll uh, go in and have a pint of half gas with him. Uh, I think that'll send him to sleep because he just won't shut up. Okay, let's go to LaGuardia. You know, your wind speed isn't set yet? That's not how it works, Norman. It's just, there's no wind. That's it. You don't have to set the, the wind. Okay. Norman, I don't think you should drink half gas ever again, okay? I'm uh I'm sorry. No, you are not. Okay, folks, we've just changed frequency in the nav one to 110.5. You can see it green at the top, and we've got 8.8 .8 miles to go. So let's close that window down and speed it up. I'm just flying the approach here in the VOR, and I have to say it is very accurate. I have no issues with it. I mean, it's perfectly good procedural trainer on the Garmin 1000. I have no complaints. I do love the way you can click on the Garmin Hey, well, what is the uh, heading on our VOR selector? Well, I fail to see why that matters, Norman. It's 225, but let's have a look there. Get right your right hands off the controls, Norman. Don't do that. I'm trying to do a review and I'm on the ILS. Stop it. Well, all right. And take your hands off the radio switch, the PT, the push to talk switch. Take your hands off everything. Don't touch okay. the thing. Okay, it's accurate, folks, all the way down. We're on final approach and we got 20 flaps. I'm going to go. No, through. you're not. Take your hands off the controls. Well, I think 30 is good. No, it's not. And take your hand off the radio. Don't touch anything ever again. Do you understand? Yep. So I've no complaints with the Garmin 1000 at all. It works really, really well on this 172 in X-Plane 11. It's fantastic. I do recommend it if you don't have a Garmin 1000, especially for those of you who are doing training in your school. You can play away with this. It doesn't cost you a penny. Now, I think what we'll do is do, we'll do a touch and go, and we'll have a quick look at New York while we're at LaGuardia. We'll just do a quick touch and go, fly off, and uh, don't forget, I'm going to tell you where to get that scenery as well. So stay with us, and uh, let's just clip ahead have a quick look at New York. Never forget that day. Shut up, Norman. Hero of the Hudson. No, you are not. LaGuardia, Cessna 365 now, 1500. We are headed for the Hudson. Negative. Disregard that last transmission. Okay, you need to return to LaGuardia. Negative. That was transmitted in error. Take your hand off the mic, Norman. We are going down. No, we are not. If we can get a view, do you want to try to land runway 13? Negative. Everything's fine here. We're continuing as planned. That's it, Norman. I'm plugging out your intercom circuit breaker. Birds. Oh, shit balls. No, Booker. Wilson, where are you? Where's that? I'm coming. Shut up, Norman. Thank you for watching, and if you do like this kind of content for Bike Simulator, please do subscribe. For more freeware, and Orster, by the way, is on the Orbex website. Please see the link below in the description. As always, we will see you next week on the Reaction Review. Well done! <laughs> Well done!